Now we've looked at how we might study across sets of species using independent contrasts, and we looked at a worked example of that with hoofed animals. But actually, independent contrasts was kind of a special case of a more uh, general method, as it turns out. And in this lecture, we are going through this more general case uh, and see if we can figure out what, what the parallels are, what, what actually the similarities are in, among the concepts. And we'll do that again with a, uh, a, a worked example. So in this case, we are looking at uh, five species of fiddler crabs. So, you know, the crabs with one big uh, pincer that they wave around. And for these five species, uh, two phenotypic traits were measured. One is the uh, breadth of the carapace. So that's like the main shield, you might say, on the body. And the other is the length of the propodus. So that's part of the, the pincer, if you like, the big one. And so here we have these values and they're log transformed. And let's see if there's some correlation between them. Now, to set this up, we have to do a little bit of brief recap uh, of uh, just general statistics, which I assume we've had at some point. So this is um, just the uh, regression using ordinary least squares. So we have two uh, variables. We have a, a independent variable predictor x and a dependent variable y and we can predict y from x with the terms in this formula so we have uh, b1 which is uh, just the slope so how much does uh, y go up or down with any step in x we have uh, b0 so the intercept so where do we cross the y-axis and then there's the uh, error term epsilon for, you know, uh, however much uh, for any given x, uh, y deviates from the uh, from the regression line. And uh, b0 and b1 can uh, then be derived, and that uh, works like this. So let's not immediately get intimidated by this. Uh, so B1, the slope, uh, is basically this, this division here. So the uh, two big uh, Greek symbols are the capital letter S, sigma for sum. And so we sum over a range and we basically direct that by saying, well, we have a counter called I and I starts at uh, value one and then we iterate through it until it reaches N. So n is our sample size, so in this case that's five, we have five species. And then uh, what, we're su what are we summing? Well, we're summing uh, for each uh, value of i, um, the value of x at the, at the i-th species, so species one, two, three, four, five, uh, minus the uh, average, so x bar is the mean, the average. Uh, and then in the a numerator, we multiply that by the difference between the value of y at i minus the mean. And then we divide that by uh, uh, x. So this is like, we're basically, okay, intuitively what we're trying to do is how does y change for a change in x, right? And that's, here's how that's done. And uh, having in this way uh, calculated the, the value for the slope, b1, we can then figure out where we cross uh, the y-axis, can't we? So that's the uh, second little formula here at the bottom. We take the average of y, and from that we subtract the average of x times the slope, and then we get the intercept. So where do we cross the y-axis? Okay, so that's that's nice remedial ordinary least squares uh, teaching and so what does it assume well it assumes uh, 
uh, basically the following uh, variance covariance matrix shown here at the bottom. So how does this uh, work? Well, um, what we're saying is that obviously, well, okay, what is this? What's this matrix? So this is a square matrix, and uh, every row is a species, and every column is also, you know, so that's five rows, and every column is also five species, five columns. And then we look at uh, how these vary or co-vary. So the diagonal is uh, the species uh, with itself. And so there, these terms are just the, the variance, which is uh, the squared difference from the mean, right? Um, so you know, standard deviation would be the square root of that. And uh, then the off diagonals, in this case, assume that there's no covariance. So here the uh, idea is that as the value for some one species goes up or down, like the carapace width gets wider, then this is totally independent of any other species. They're, they don't co-vary. Now, I guess we already figured out that that's not the case. And so these values of zero uh, are uh, do not apply in our case, right? There actually is a uh, influence of relatedness. So brief recap: uh, first row, first column represents the first species in our data set, so chloroftalmus, and then, uh, for example, in first row. The second cell uh, expresses the extent to which uh, Crassipes co-varies with Chlorophthalmus. And in this case, we say, well, they don't co-vary at all. Um, and so then the diagonal is just the species on itself, so the variance. And so in this case, if we were to include this type of variance-covariance matrix, then this is what ordinary least squares is. And putting any other values in there, well, then we kind of generalize, so that leads us to generalized least squares. Now, here now comes the trick uh, for how we can uh, use this variance covariance matrix, or just covariance matrix, or a Varkov matrix, or just all refers to the same thing. Um, well, the here, because there is the shared history, and so they have been evolving trade values for, for a while as members of the same lineage within the ancestors, so obviously they're going to co-vary. Um, well, we have to do something with this. And so uh, here now, how we might do that, right? So how do we deal with this uh, co-variation? On the right, okay, this is a little bit of a busy slide, I know. Uh, now, on the right, we have our tree again. So here we have our five tags. Huh? In this case, the branches are conveniently all length one, except the bottom branch is on length three. And uh, on the left, we have a, a variance covariance matrix with some values inserted in there. So what are these? Well, we have our diagonal, so that's the, basically the species with themselves, and that's basically the, the variance. And you might remember that the uh, variance uh, proportionally increases with the amount of time that we run the uh, Brownian motion, right, over time. So uh, we put this in here, as follows, so we basically say, well, the variance thus is proportional to the uh, length of amount of evolutionary time, so that is the path from the root to the tip of the taxon that we're looking at. So, for example, shown here in red, well, there's uh, one example with that first species, of Thomas, and so these three red um, edge lengths, when we add them up, well, that's a uh, value of three, 
Now, in this case, the uh, tree is ultrametric, so uh, all the paths from the root to the tip are the same length. Uh, so actually, we can insert that same value everywhere. So that actually doesn't have to be the case in, in more general terms. Trees could also be additive so that the tips don't line up. In this case, they are, so it's the same value everywhere. Then for the uh, off diagonals, so now we're saying, for example, well, to what extent do Groftalmus and Krasipes co vary? Well, that's proportional to their shared amount of evolutionary history, and that's the two blue branch lengths. So when we add those up, we get the values that are circled here um, values of two. And um, so obviously when you work through this further, you see why there is then some values of one. So that's basically when we're comparing these two sister clades that each have two tabs in them, uh, or uh, zero when we are comparing basically the in-group taxa, uh, any in-group taxon with the out-group taxon Argilicola. Now, uh, oh yeah, so what about these values? Well, they are uh, symmetrical, right? So the distance from uh, one taxon to another on the tree is the same as the distance from the other to the one. So the uh, lower triangle and the upper triangle have the same values. And uh, the values are, logically, they're going to be positive, right? So if these would be negative values, then that means that uh, the more shared history they have, the more different they are from one another. Well, I don't know if there's any plausible example of that, but in the general case, that's not the case. Okay, so this variance covariance matrix is something that you could work out yourself in code so again this is by traversing the tree and uh, later on in the course i'll give you some examples of uh, uh, tree traversal algorithms so how do you walk across a tree shape in code um, and so that's would be the way in which you can build this Varkov matrix yourself and just use it in any general uh, R function for uh, performing GLS. But that seems like a hassle. Uh, so there's of course also packages that do this for you. Uh, for example, in the package Geiger, uh, and you basically stick in a tree and a data in your data and it figures out the uh, values to stick in the Varkov matrix for you. And then that's how we can do the regression. Thank you very much for listening.